get a beer. Little Face Hard Cider, Stephen J. Poor. I'm crushing my way through these homebrew you sent me. Uh, this one scares me a little bit, not gonna lie. It's a cider, it's 14% ABV. If you haven't checked out uh, the SJ Poor Challenge stuff, you should definitely do that. International Homebrew Challenges Man as a Professional. Uh, I've been following his work for quite some time. I'm very excited to be actually sampling his wares. That's how you send uh, homebrews around the world, folks. Fuck happened to that goddamn bottle opener there. So organized. I just had a bottle opener and everything. Now I'm here just using a fucking marker. Did you hear that? Get yourself some ASMR going on there. It does smell like apples. It smells like apple jacks. It tastes like a like an ice wine. It tastes like a nice dessert wine. Now, on to some other things. I'm working on this series, right? People ask me, how do you pick out your beers. Last episode, I gave you some labels, just flashed them through. We're gonna do kind of the same thing today, again, only this time it's about brewing integrity, less trying to avoid the illusion of choice that is giant, horrible multinational corporations. Start the label show. Whew, gave me a little chill. I don't think I can drink a whole one of these. I should be sharing it. <laughs> But I'm not gonna. So there are a few brands I want to call out right away and just let you know that you shouldn't be drinking them. This may be rough for you. I understand it's difficult. But if you want to know how I do things, this is how I do it. Melvin Brewing. They had some sexual harassment things that happened not too long ago. It's a whole bunch of um, bro activities that have caused them to sour a lot of relationships here in the Pacific Northwest. So I avoid Melvin Brewing. And a real big point to all of this, people, is that there are other options out there. And I'm just helping narrow it down for you. Trillium. Not only has Trillium not been paying their employees appropriate wages, but they've also been just lying on their labels about what beer, what they're doing with their beer. So like they'll say they have like a tequila barrel aged beer and instead of actually barrel aging it in tequila barrels, they'll just add a little bit of tequila into the beer. I want them to apologize. I want them to change their ways. And I think that the best way that's gonna happen is if we give them the old one, two, heave ho, not my money, yo. <sighs> founders, just avoid founders. They are in under, they are being motherfucking sued because uh, one of their former employees said that he continuously brought to human resources the uh, racist issues that he was confronting as a black man in that company. This goes straight to your noggin. Where was I? Labels. Okay, so I don't know why this is so difficult. The Brewers Association has a best practices for marketing and advertising three page paper. I'll pull it up real fast here. It has a sexually explicit, lewd or demeaning brand names, language, text, video. I love that they put this in here. Anything that a reasonable adult. So part of the problem with some of these breweries we're gonna talk about is that these people are not fucking reasonable adults. And I I love a lot of like 13 year old boy jokes. I watch a lot of Star Trek and I like boobs. That being said, uh, I, I don't think the beer industry needs that kind of fun. Just even saying it now, like, oh fucking really? Chesty LaRue. Oh God. And that was my immediate response. So this is what the label looked like. Uh, and I say that past tense because they've now changed it. Uh, the unfortunate thing that happened with that story was the co-owner of the business, the female partnership of that, was part of the creative design behind that label. She said 100%, she stood behind it, she loves it, it's fun, it's great, it's playful, it's burlesque, and it was a namesake for one of her best friends growing up. To me, that feels a lot like Oh, I'm friends with a black guy so I can say the N-word. For me, that's one of the main problems I have with most of these labels, as you'll see, is that people hide behind cartoon versions of people in the assumption that that's somehow going to put a veil over the stupid joke. And, and the consumer that's looking at this label doesn't get the narrative generally 
is what ends up happening here. And hey, I I really want that beer to be to the label for that beer to be re-released. Please, Fire Forge, have another artist redo it with a more powerful woman. She can keep all of her big titties. Just make it so that I better understand what it is you're going for. Beer is fun already, you know? Sorry, I'm having a bad hair day and it's, I have to. <sighs> Back to my 14% cider. Thank you. SJ Poor Challenge. Go check it out. So, uh, Against the Grain has one that gets people riled up all the fucking time and it makes me laugh. Uh, Brown Note. Total stupid fucking joke. I know a lot of places that don't even want to stock that beer because of that. And there are some breweries that I just avoid 100% all the way because they embody this shit that I hate. Clown Shoes. I don't even see them anymore. I'm not even sure if Clown Shoes is available here in Oregon because I don't see it. There are a lot to choose from. We could just keep going with these labels. Leg Spreader. Why? Using other cultures, uh, important historical figures, not necessary. You know, like there's so many other things to be inspired by. Along the same lines, thank you, uh, Ale of a Time, Luke for uh, bringing this to my attention. There are quite a few breweries going on in Australia that are using uh, dead rappers. And I know that happens a lot, like Biggie and Tupac and things like that, but do you gotta? If you can't in any other way represent yourself other than making a shitty cartoon of someone else's important cultural figure, then you're doing your job wrong. You need a new marketing team. You need to actually pay a marketing team. This is the same problem we had with that boy. I think it was like Reckless Brewing or whatever and he had the just the most sexist, stupid fucking names for his stuff. I don't care how good the beer is. He needs to learn his lesson. You can support people and support their change. That's what good friendship is for. So hopefully, same, hopefully that guy shuts down his whole place and then he opens back up again with a renewed sense of understanding that he doesn't need to use black lives matter as a slogan to sell his beer and if any of you motherfuckers are like oh, it's just beer it doesn't matter i just want it to be good that's the point of this whole thing here is we have now expanded enough where we not only demand that the beer is good we have so many good beers out there that now we can start actually supporting companies, industries, breweries, people that brew integrity. We don't need breweries like Fat Beaver anymore. Oh, it's real. And it's still there. And the only way these places are going to listen is, is if we say something about it, one, two, just avoid them. Just don't. Don't give them your money. Don't support it. Don't support their events. Don't support their collaborations. Don't have tasters of their shit at festivals. So when I walk into a bottle shop, I'm able to avoid a lot of breweries. One, that I know are not brewing integrity. They're not up to social standard these days. Or two, that are perpetuating a brand that doesn't represent beer in a good light. Right? There you have it. You're welcome. I love you. Have a great day. It's beautiful outside. I'm gonna fix this hair someday, I promise. <laughs> See you tomorrow.